Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. My name is Eric. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys are feeling well today. I hope you're doing well today. I hope you have a great day. Yesterday was interesting. <laughs> Yesterday was very interesting for me. Um, but uh, Aluna Ash posted a video last night that really helped me put some things into perspective, at least with what I've been going through. Um, it's been a really rough few days. There's been a lot of purging. There's been a lot of pain, um, a lot of recycling in, <coughs> excuse me, recycling of um, past energies of like self-worth and stuff like that. So... Um, watching that video really helps me understand, you know, why I was cycling so hard through a lot of this stuff again, because I honestly felt like I had really dealt with it, but it kind of like came back with a vengeance. Um, so if you're having a rough time um, and you haven't watched Aluna Ash's video from yesterday talking about, I don't even remember the name, the title of the video, but um, uh, if you haven't watched that, I recommend you do because it might put some things into perspective for you. Um, but I am feeling a bit better today, so I hope you guys are doing better today. Tomorrow is Halloween, that's exciting, woohoo! Um, happy Halloween. Um, so I woke up this morning with some music in my head, and that happens all the time, <laughs> all the time. So that's nothing special, but um, I've been wanting to share it with you guys for some time, um, and there was a song yesterday that Spirit kept pushing me to, sh to you know, post because I feel like a lot of us are going through a lot of the same things, and so I feel like it would be helpful to share that as some a form of therapy, but I never did it. So I'm going to start today. Um, and it's funny, because the, the song that um, popped into my head as soon as I was getting myself out of bed was a, is a song that I have not heard in a long, long time. Um, it's an old Monica song. It's called cross the room <laughs> it goes see you from across the room like you want to know me voice if you want to make a move meet me on the dance floor though i'm here with someone else he's not what i'm looking for instead of sitting across the room meet me on the dance floor i'm gonna post it in um <laughs> in the post but i just haven't heard that song in the longest time and it was kind of random but not really because i feel like a lot of us are going through a situation where you know we've kind of come into contact with someone new or or there's just somebody that and actually this has even been coming out in missy's readings if you follow her saltwater heels to row um but it's like you you made contact with someone um, or you've been dreaming about someone that you haven't met yet and it's like they're watching you or they're kind of like timid They're kind of wanting to come forward and like make some sort of offer that even came out yesterday in yesterday's reading that You know, there's someone out there that was kind of just kind of like watching um, And but with the page of swords in reverse there was no need to <laughs> Gain Intel anymore <laughs> is what spirit is saying and so like they're kind of wrestling with coming forward and making a move or you know Saying something but there's fear behind it with the devil that came out also um, But then then there's a second song that is right underneath that It's kind of like the balance here because it's like, you know for a lot of us with all that we've gone through lately you can't just you know fall for someone and, and expect that to be enough you know like you there's there's more to it and it's so funny because it's this song called never enough by ally x listen y'all <laughs> ally x has become one of my favorite artists right now she has been like a pillar for me for over a year um but this one song never enough is a song that i could just listen on listen to on repeat um, it's one of my favorite songs ever, and it's been one of my favorite songs for like over a year now, but um, it goes, Never enough going up in smoke, we are choking on burning love, love is not enough, never enough, yeah, we came so close, never enough in the ashes of burning love, love is not enough. Oh my God. Oh my God, you guys. <laughs> I love that song so much. I mean, it just speaks to such volumes. Love, you can chase it, but it always leaves you behind. Ooh, 
and try to escape it, but it's all that keeps you alive. Oh, if I win the race, will I get the prize? Will I see your face when I close my eyes? When I touch the flame, felt the warning signs, wish that I had known. Love is never enough. And it goes into the chorus. Oh my God, I'm going to share it with you guys. But I just had to sing it because it's just like one of my favorite songs ever. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. So I'm going to share those in the posts. Please don't hesitate to let me know how they resonate with you. Um, and I'm going to do that now. Because spirit has been really guiding me to do so. Because I really, because that's, that's just, it's another way for all of us to connect and heal and like purge all of this bullshit energy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. I'm going to share that in the posts. Please don't hesitate to let me know how that resonates with you guys, yeah? <clears throat> okay. Um, for those of you that, care, that, that, that would find it funny, I did remember to blow my nose this morning. <laughs> so let's see. Let's see how, um, how, that, how long that lasts. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to get into it now. So let's get into the reading for the day. This is going to be a general reading for the day of October 30th, 2018. Um, this is just a general energy reading. This is not sign specific. This is not love or career specific. This is just whatever spirit wants to talk about today, whatever's going on with us today, or doesn't even have to resonate for today. It's just that the messages are coming through at this moment. Um, this doesn't have to resonate with you now. It could resonate with you tomorrow, a week from now, a month from now whatever yeah i do have a playlist on my channel um of all the morning coffees uh readings so if you wanna at some point like go back and just listen to a bunch of them i recommend you do so yeah all right everyone let's settle in and get to it hi spirit Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for today, October 30th, Tuesday, October 30th, 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, so check it out, guys. The first thing I'm seeing is blue. Um, and it's funny because the album cover for Monica's The Boy Is Mine album, which is where that song Cross the Room comes from, um, she's wearing blue. There's a lot of blue in it. And Spirit is saying to me, yes, there's communication that's needed, okay? It's time to just speak up, tell the truth, be honest about what you're feeling, and don't leave someone in the dark. It's literally what spirit is saying and that's what I'm seeing with blue blue is the color of the throat chakra um, so the time is coming and I'm hearing the time is coming is all to also be honest with yourself about what you're truly feeling if you're going through this purgy cycle and you're just trying to hide it you're trying to hide from it you're trying to hide from the emotions now is not the time for that okay it's and don't get me wrong, I understand how rough it is. I mean, <laughs> I had a rough few days. Like, I spent, I was on and off crying yesterday and Sunday just because of all of this stuff that was coming out, all of this past pain, um, like all these complexes that I have developed over my lifetime are all, you know, being released. So it's not a bad thing to feel these energies. My good friend Betsy of Fearless, Fearless Intuition, she did a Reiki um, healing for me two weeks ago, and she one of the things she said to me was, don't be afraid to show emotion. If you want to cry, if you need to cry, then cry. And trust me, while I, while she was while she was doing the 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 session, I was bawling like it was bad. <laughs> I was just like heaving, <laughs> like it was bad. But um, and then like yesterday, I was just it was that kind of like research, and I was just back and forth between like kind of okay and sobbing again and then kind of okay and then sobbing again and then feeling happy and jovial jovial and like laughing because i was watching one of my favorite shows star versus the forces of evil if you don't know that show and you like cartoons you need to watch that show because it's fantastic star versus the forces of evil but i was watching that and laughing and then the next thing i know i'm crying again you know so it was all a process of just releasing all of this shit that's been just been 
building up. Um, and like Aluna, Aluna Ash said in her latest video that she posted yesterday, I'm so sorry, but I don't remember the name of the video. Wait, let me get my phone. Maybe I can, or something. Maybe I can find it. I want to, I want to find it because there are some people that are going to watch this and it's not, and it's not going to be, you know, the next day. Um, so I want to get the, the name of it, but, um, what Aluna said in that video was that, um, you know, this is another cycle this is another cycle of releasing, of releasing the shit, of purging, you know? And so this is why this is happening again. Um, why there are things that are coming up that you may have thought that you dealt with, but, you know, it's, for some reason, it's reared its ugly head again. Um, give me just a second, guys. I do want to find the name of this video for you. Um, but heal it feel it and, then, and i say this all the time instead of feeling things and keeping yourself in okay i'm sorry it was it's an it's an it's the energy update for october 29th that's literally the only name she's put to it the energy update for october 29th is the video that i'm referring to and spirit is is saying feel these emotions with intentions of healing them, of releasing them. That's literally the only way you're going to be able to release them and heal them is if you feel them. So instead of getting frustrated with yourself because you can't find what it is that's holding you down, in those moments when they all just naturally come up, go through it. Take that moment. Take that opportunity to purge, to release the baggage, okay? Whew. All right. So with that said... Let's get into the energies for today. What is what do we have for us today? What's going on? October Tuesday, October 29th, 2018. Tuesday. Tuesday, October 29th. Woo! Okay. Now that's a lot, but you know what? We're gonna go for it. Okay, all right. Underneath the deck, we've got the two of pentacles, the balancing act. Yes, the yes, the two. Of pentacles. All right. I'm gonna leave this. This card is this card flew out. Um, uh, it flew out face down. So that's something that's kind of hidden from us right now. So I'm gonna go into what we do have. We've got the sun. Hello. We've got the sun. That's excellent. We've got the four of pentacles, the eight of wands, the two of wands. Oh boy. Look, this is a lot. The Five of Pentacles, the Wheel of Fortune, and what a beautiful way to end all of that. The Ace of Cups. And to me, the Ace of Cups here is really mirroring this energy of the sun that's crowning the reading here, okay? We've got the sun. So everything is going to be fine, all right? There's purging that's happening. There's illumination that's happening, okay? And um, you may really feel like, with this Two of Pentacles here, you may, may really feel like you may be struggling to keep it all together, to keep it in balance. Um, you also may be bringing things back into balance, okay? having to bring like yourself your life back into balance um we have the four of pentacles and we have the five of pentacles here so there is a release happening okay often the four of pentacles talks about um holding on to something um needing to let go of something holding on for dear life uh, almost maybe even suffocating it the four of pentacles is often an energy is actually i'm seeing it this way now but within vedic sidereal astrology um there is a nakshatra within cancer i believe it's called ashlesha and that's actually where um my and my moon in vedic astrology is in cancer and it's actually in that uh, that nakshatra, my moon, is at 29 degrees of Cancer. And so, um, Ashlesha is that, uh, if I'm saying that correctly, I, I believe I am, but um, that is the, the nakshatra of, I think one of, actually, the nakshatras of the serpent, of the Naga, um, which talks about the Kundalini, which makes so much sense as to why I've been very much a sexual being. Um, we all are, but, you know, the Kundalini energy has been a major theme within my life my whole life, <laughs> but also the, the, the nature, this is, that's the nakshatra that cancers get the, um, clingy, clingy, uh, uh, um, characteristic or labeling from, because serpents tend to, you know, wrap themselves around something and hold on for dear life. And, um, you know, they can, 
strangle or suffocate or, you know, uh, constrict um, something, you know, kind of constrict the life out of it. And so that's kind of sometimes the energy of the Four of Pentacles here. You're holding on to something for so long, so 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 tightly that, um, you know, you're, you constrict it, 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 you lose your own sense of self, sense of being, um, because you're so attached to something. But this is being released now. With the Five of Pentacles, there is an energy of needing, of a feeling left out in the cold, and this is associated with this release that's going through, okay, that we're going through, okay? But you see now, it gets, this gets so much better. So to, to a certain extent, I feel like this four and five of pentacles energy is um, is kind of like past, is in the past. So you could have, just like me, you could have gone through this situation where you were doing a lot of purging and healing. And I know for a fact that I was definitely feeling five of pentacles energy throughout all of this. Like, uh, <laughs> I felt abandoned, abused, taken advantage of, left out in the cold, and all that kind of stuff. A destitute, impoverished, even though I have, you know, a really nice place with really awesome roommates and I'm doing very well, I'm thriving in life physically and financially, emotionally, man, I would have been just destitute, or at least I felt like that, okay? So that's definitely what this Five of Pentacles is about for a lot of us. But then see here, we get into the next bit here. This is the past. This is the present. Um, again, this is a general message. This does not have to resonate with you now. This could resonate with you in the future. Past, but the present here is the Eight of Wands and the Wheel of Fortune. Swift movement, okay? Swift, decisive movement. And it's funny because um, the color that I was getting this morning, or actually the color that I was getting when I was... Um, you know, channeling the energies and praying for the energies for today, for the messages for today. We got, uh, I saw blue, which is communication. And eight of wands here, the, the key word in this deck, it says mess. Did I just hear a crow? I love crows. Anyway, um, the key word here is messages. Eight of wands often is about communication. So with the wheel of fortune here, not only are we moving swiftly through changes, through transformations here, because the key word is also changes here with the Wheel of Fortune. But not only are we doing that, but there are energies of communication coming through. Hey, so things could really be changing in your favor for communication to to really happen with your within your life here, okay? It could be communication with someone that you're connecting with, like that song that popped into my head this morning, Cross the Room. You see, I see from the Cross the Room like you wanna know me. If you wanna make a move, meet me on the dance floor, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so that's really nice. And then the future here, we have the Two of Wands and the Ace of Cups. So there is definitely, there is definitely a decision that's going to need to be made here. And that decision, it would behoove you to make that decision. Please don't let me tell you what to do. But again, it would behoove you <laughs> to make that decision under the guise of self-love here with the Ace of Cups. This is what we've been learning here, guys. The Ace of Cups, self-love, learning to fill your own cup. Yes. So make a decision. This is very, this is like, it's so funny because the combination of these two with the two of wands and the ace of cups together is like the energy of the lovers. Okay, the lovers is often about making a choice. And when I describe the lovers, I like to, a lot of the time, I like to say it's a choice between vice or virtue. Vice being a choosing others' wishes, others' desires over your own, or virtue, choosing yourself. And here we have that depiction with the two of wands and the ace of cups. So now... What's hidden from us? <laughs> Temperance. Temperance is what's hidden from us. Patience. The balancing act, okay? Um, who is it that I was watching that was saying that Temperance is like the Two of Cups? Or, uh, I think it's Shay of Pisces Moon, 1111. She, she says, I think it was her. Um, cause I was watching her last night and she, yes, it was her. And she was saying, and she says that she thinks of the two of, uh, of pent, of temp, excuse me, of temperance as the two of cups, because often it's two cups here. Um, in this deck, it doesn't say that, but it doesn't, it's not depicted that way, but you can see that champagne bottle and the glass that she's pouring the champagne into as like the two cups that the, normally an angel would be basically combining 
to take to temper two opposite energies and make them into a whole new thing transmute them into a whole new thing okay so patience what's hidden from us right now is the fact that there is a lot a lot of balancing happening and there's something that came through this morning for me that was like kind of an aha moment and it very much speaks to temperance here but um and this is something that came out in my twin flame reading uh the weekly twin flame mirror reading two weeks ago i believe it was um the divine feminine energies have very much gone through a shit ton of their awakening already and so now it's the divine masculine energy's turn and we have to be patient with them now for a lot of us things have gone so far that even when the divine masculines really go through their awakening and they see things for what they truly are and they're really awoken, they're really woke, you could say, um, <laughs> it's going to take a lot for a lot of us to see them in a different light. Um, and it's going to take a lot for us to want to reconnect and like, you know, have that connection or honor that connection again. But that's not really the point. Of the twin flame journey to, in, in my opinion the point is really about going through your awakening and you know ascending and then as a twin flame you're a torchbearer you're a first responder you're a light worker and so that's pulling others along with you so as long as they reach that awakening that's really all that matters there right okay that's great but so what's going how it's happening now is for a lot of us that are connecting with someone new um, they're having to go through their awakening process too. And you guys are not going to really be an alignment until they have reached a certain vibration that matches yours. And so this is what's happening here with temperance, okay? The balancing act. People are going through their awakenings right now, guys. And my attention keeps being drawn to the sun, so because, which says clarity, okay? Understanding, the, 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 the keyword here is clarity. But it's also about understanding. It's also about recognizing that things are much better than they, than they seem at the moment. Things are 22-22 on the counter. Things are going to be just fine. Things are going to be, turn out to be way better than you expected. Things already are way better than you expected, okay? All right. So I want to pull some clarifiers here. I want to get some information. Um, I want to clarify the Four of Pentacles and the Five of Pentacles a little bit. Just so we can get a bit of a greater understanding, <clears throat> excuse me, just so we can get a greater understanding of, you know, what we're releasing, um, what we're purging. Because the four and the five of pentacles to me is like perfect storm of purgy energy. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, guys. Often when I talk a lot, I get, I get phlegmy and snotty and just, it's gross. <laughs> It's gross. But anyway, so we're going to pull some clarifiers for today, Tuesday, October 30th, 2018. We get in there. And we're going to start with the four and the five of pentacles. Okay. So let's see. Clarification, please, on the four and the five of pentacles. Okay, yeah, you see, you see, what did I say, guys? What did I say? The world. Oh, fucking right. Look, underneath the deck, we have judgment, okay? So this is the call. This is the call to the universe. This is, these are the, judgment would be the waves that are coming through that um, Aluna Ash is talking about with, um, um, with the energy update for yesterday, uh, October 29th, she was talking about the waves that are coming through. And I'm seeing judgment here as these waves that are that are facilitating this purge. It's like the waves of energy are coming through and they're influencing us to start purging these things that are no longer in alignment, that keep us in dense um, energies um, that we cannot hold on to as we raise our vibrations and as we become more of, our light beings, our light bodies, our light selves, okay? Um, and so that's that call. That is the, that, like, basically it's an alarm clock, right? That's continuing to wake us up. We have the hermit. Woo! 
oh shit. <laughs> I don't know if y'all just saw that, but I picked up the hermit and it flipped over this card that fell face down and it's the tower. It's the tower, guys. The hermit and the tower. Jesus Christmas. Look at this shit, man. I mean, damn. You couldn't get, I mean, this is literally exactly what's happening right now. The tower, we're having, we're, it's like we're basically having a collective tower moment, okay? And with the hermit here, it's leading towards greater introspection. It's leading towards greater understanding of ourselves, okay? And also what flew out is the world. And it's funny that the world landed on the Two of Wands and the Ace of Cups. I wanna pull, I'm gonna pull clarifiers for each section here for the Eight of Wands, the Tip and the Wheel, and then the Two of Wands and the Ace of Cups. But the world landed, it is a clarifier for the Four and the Five of Pentacles, don't get me wrong, but it did land on the Ace of Cups and the Two of Wands. So that's saying, it's further um, clarifying, or um, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, Enforcing the fact that as we go through this purge, as we go through this tower moment and the hermit, it's bringing an end to cycles that keep us from this self-love that we've been working on cultivating and choosing our own selves, our own hearts, what it is we truly desire over that of the others. I swear, this is like literally the Ace of Cups and the Two of Wands to me is like a, a, a minor, the, the combination of the two is like a minor arcana version of the lovers okay wow holy shit that's strong okay so now let's clarify the eight of wands and the wheel of fortune please eight of wands and the wheel of fortune spirit saying one more pull don't look underneath the deck yet okay eight of wands and the wheel of fortune please there we go oh no that's too much take the knight of swords I'm not going to take these. Underneath. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so look. We've got temperance again, guys. All right, that's underneath the deck. So. And what came out and what's what came out face up is the Knight of Swords. So we definitely could be dealing with some potential communication now. Here's the thing, because what I'm getting with this so far is that the reason why there may not be this actual communication right now is because um, someone might feel pretty reckless. Someone might want to rush in and communicate, but probably doesn't want to move too fast, doesn't really know what to say, doesn't know how to say it in an effective manner. It, what are the, the energy that I'm getting from this Knight of Swords in this situation, Excuse me. The energy I'm getting from the Knight of Swords in this situation is that someone wants to communicate and kind of maybe wants to rush in, but at the same time, they don't want to rush in, okay? They don't really know what to say. And so the energies of temperance are at play here to bring balance into the situation, um, to make sure that it, whatever communication does come through in the future, again, my attention keeps getting pulled to the sun. I want to point that out, but whatever energies, whatever communication comes through in the future is balanced and not destructive, okay? We have, oh, you guys, I told you my energy, my attention kept getting pulled to the sun. We have the sun here, okay? And we have the six of cups, but both of these are in reverse. That's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Okay. It, why is it not a bad thing? Because it's just, these are, this is blocked. Okay. It's just a blockage. It's just, uh, I'm feeling there's resistance here. There's a lot of resistance. It also could be maybe it, either the person you're connecting with here, um, wants to move pretty quickly or doesn't want to move too fast, or maybe you may have moved a little too fast. I mean, that's and that's actually part of what I was purging, what I've been purging lately. Um, in Vedic sidereal uh, astrology, I'm an Aries, and I've been really, <laughs> I've been really connecting with that. I've been connecting with my, my Vedic um, chart a lot lately. It just feels more natural to me. Um, my sun is in Aries, my moon is in Cancer, and my rising is Leo. 
And I've really been resonating with that a lot more than my Western chart, in which in the Western chart, my sun is in Taurus, my moon is in Leo, and my rising is Virgo. Um, and my Venus in the in the Western chart is in is in Aries, whereas my Venus is in the Eastern chart is in Pisces. All like the Eastern chart just resonates with me a lot more. And so I often I tend to move quite quickly, you know. Um, <laughs> I do. I mean, it, I don't. I don't waste any time. If I see something that I want, and I I feel like it's right, I go for it. Okay. I often try not to knight of swords in. I'm often the knight of wands or the king of wands. I'm very much the king of wands. But I've been working on connecting with you know my queen of wands side because it's just trying to you know attract, allow things to come to me, but being an Aries, you know, I'm still very action oriented, so I'm going to take action. So either the person you're connecting with, if you're connecting with someone else, the person that you're connecting with may have felt like you moved too quickly. Um, but again, with the sun being here, it's not as bad as you think, okay? Because ultimately, with the six of cups, you have a soulmate connection, you have a past connection, you have a past life connection, whatever that might be for you. And I really feel like... I really feel like both people recognize this. Um, and so that's why the sun is here. It's just in reverse because it's like, it's not as bad as you think. The sun is here again. And it's so funny because my attention kept coming, kept being pulled to the sun and we have it twice here. We also have temperance twice here, okay? Just let the balancing act happen. But the, the, what the main focus that the universe wants you to place or the main area that your unit the universe wants you to place your focus on is your healing work your purging okay and that's something that i was really connecting with yesterday it's like i'm going through all of this again in order to clear space for you know the relationship the connection the bond that i desire and a good friend of mine um, actually, it's the friend that gave me this this deck, the Beautiful Creatures deck. She mentioned to me yesterday, even though I probably, at the moment, I really didn't want to hear it because I was so deep and wallowing in my own pity, but <laughs> but she mentioned to me that, you know, because I've been, I've been um, you know, my moon is in Cancer, and so I have, a lot of the time, I deal with self-worth issues, and a lot of what I've been going through is, like, feeling like I'm going to be alone for the rest of my life. And she said to me, she was like, well, it's obvious that you're not going to be alone for the rest of your life, Eric, because you have this desire to have a family again, and you wouldn't have that desire if God didn't put it there for you to have. You wouldn't have that desire if it wasn't something you were aligning with, okay? And she was absolutely right. So use this time for to, with temperance here, use this time even though you might, you or the other person might want to rush in and communicate and just get things going, use this time to heal, to purge, to clear out all of the shit that keeps you from realizing this stuff, that keeps you from this self-love, okay? So now, I'm sorry guys, give me a second, I have to blow my nose again. Ugh, Ugh that's so gross. Okay, so rude. <laughs> Sorry guys, okay, all this channeling and talking is making my nose itch and then that's making it run and blah, blah, blah. Okay, here we go. So now we're gonna clarify the Two of Wands and the Ace of Cups here, all right? Two of Wands, Ace of Cups, please. Woo, that wanted to come out. Seven of Swords, yikes. But, oh goodness, the Seven of Swords, looks like this is the Ten of Swords, yep. And then, one more that's hidden and it's connected with this. Okay, okay guys. Wow, all right, so here's the really heavy part of the situation. Underneath the deck we have the Nine of Swords, okay? So there's anxiety, um, but this is the purge that's happening, okay? We have the Seven of Swords and the Ten of Swords. Now, thankfully here, the Seven of Swords is in reverse. So this, in this case, instead of it being a blockage, what this is talking about, this is the release of this self-deceptive energy. Um, it's also a release of energies of people that do this to you, that um, I'm gonna go ahead and say it this way, that you have allowed to steal from you, to take advantage of you, to, to, to pull the wool over your eyes even. Um, and yes, you have, 
I mean, that's just the God's honest truth. You've allowed it to happen. Nobody can do anything to you that you don't necessarily allow. And it's like, well, Eric, how can you say that? What about children that are going through terrible, terrible things? Well, hate to break it to you, but we all choose the circumstances that we deal with in our life. But we choose it in order to learn from it. And so now we're getting to the point where we've learned from it. We're done because we have the Ten of Swords here. And that is allowing us, that is straight up allowing us to now choose ourselves over that of another, our own wishes over that of another, okay? Now, there is a card that did fall out face down um, and it fell here in this column. I'm wondering, ah, <laughs> the Eight of Pentacles. We're doing the work, you guys. And it's so funny this is literally what I just said. What I just said about doing the work, doing the pur doing the purging, doing the healing, doing the clearing in order to allow this here with the Eight of Wands and the Wheel of Fortune, clarified by the Sun, the Six of Cups, and the Knight of Swords, doing all that work with the Eight of Pentacles here to clear away all of this shit, straight up shit, you guys that keeps us from having, and I'm gonna turn it upright this time, that keeps us from having this soulmate bond. This could be a soulmate, it could be your twin flame. Who knows? But what you're doing, what we're all doing right now, is clearing the way, energetically, to have this vibrational counterpart, this vibrational match come through. I'm gonna leave it upright this time. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm going to keep it real. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to keep it real because this is the reality right now. There is a blockage here, but we're working through it. And actually, this Knight of Swords could be seen as your energetic knight in shining armor, rushing in to battle to fight against what is blocking you. This could be the energies that you're adopting in order to clear the way, in order to clear the path. Oh my God, you guys, this is gorgeous. This is just absolutely gorgeous. All right, so now let's get into the Oracle Guidance for the day. Um, we're gonna start with the Whispers of Love and then we're gonna close the reading with the, oracle, uh, the um, Crystal Mandala Oracle. God, this Ali X song, Never Enough, is in my head. It's just, I just, <laughs> I love it. It's just such a deep, a deep concept. Um, and that's actually something I really, I want to talk about that for a second. It's something that we're really coming to terms with. I know for me, being on this Twin Flame journey, you know, I learned that love really just, in this physical reality, love just, isn't enough all the time, you know, because many of us have loved this person that we consider to be our twin so, so much, and we probably still do. Um, I'm not saying that love has gone away. It's just things have changed. Our scope has changed. Our vision, our, our understanding of what it really takes to have a partnership um, even a divine partnership, whether you're a twin flame or not, a divine partnership, which is very close to what a twin flame situation is. You're just not on the leading edge of things. But um, yeah, the love could be there, but there has to be a balance. There has to be a healthy balance within the self before there can be a healthy balance within the relationship. So love is strong, but in this physical reality, Love just some just often isn't enough. You have to have more than just love, okay? Um, you could love someone to pieces, but if they're treating you like shit, obviously that's not going to work. And that resonates with how Betsy of uh, Fearless Intuition, that's how re it resonates with how she, she doesn't look at this as unconditional love because in this 3D reality, there are going to be conditions, period. And so she calls it pure love. So you can hold pure love for someone, but that does not mean you're going to be with them because they're low in vibration or you're low in vibration or your vibrations just don't match somehow. 
So the, I'm definitely going to share these two songs. Um, it's like the really, and it's funny because it's like the, the two songs, it's the balance here with the two of pentacles. The first song being Cross the Room. See you from across the room like you want to know me, boy. If you want to make a move, meet me on the dance floor. Versus never enough going up in smoke. We are choking on burning love. Love is not enough. You see that balance right there? That is instead. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Okay, cool. So let's get into the, the, the Oracle Guidance here. We're starting with the Whispers of Love. Best messages for woo, Tuesday, October 30th. Okay, we got it. Wow. Underneath the deck, guys. Union of Hearts. So this is the Twin Flame deck card for me in this deck. I really... Did this come out yesterday? I believe it did. Union of Hearts. But what I'm seeing here for us today, this is the union of the self. So this is the lovers. This is the two of cups. This is the twin flames, right? And as I explained in my weekly twin flame reading on Sunday, this past Sunday, the 28th of October, um, to me, the ultimate twin flames are the divine masculine and the divine feminine, which are energetic beings are energetic entities okay they're non-physical entities and we all contain those energies within right so this is with 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 this card here this is the balance that's coming into play within all of us of masculine and feminine energies and this is the union that we're finding within which will lead to the union without or outside of us externally yes the official message is Card number 13, Miracles and Blessings. Everything has its gift. So going through this purgy cycle again, please understand that this is definitely a blessing in disguise. I mean, me, me personally, I feel already, I feel a lot lighter, you know? I feel like I dealt with my issues on a much deeper level, which is really only bringing me into greater alignment with myself and with Source, you know? It's, it's really quite a beautiful thing. Okay, so now we're going to get into the closing message from the Crystal Mandala Oracle. Okay, guys, let's see what you got for me. Woo! There it is. Good. Lord, wow, okay. On the bottom of the deck, we have relief and repair. So this is absolutely what we're going through right now. Sorry, that glare. This is absolutely what we're going through right now, relief and repair, okay? Um, yeah, I don't need to read that one because we that one's pretty self-explanatory. But here, we've got card number 13, another 13. Any of you that are re resonating with 13, um, there's that, but also we are in Scorpio season, and card number 13 in the Major Arcana is Death, so Tiger Spirit Rises, so we're definitely going through a transmutation, a transformation, and then we also have From Word to World, which is, I believe, a card that came out last week for us. All right, so let's read this real quick, because we are 43 minutes into this reading, but that's okay. We had a lot to talk about. All right, Tiger Spirit Rises. Ooh, I don't know if you can hear my stomach, but I'm a little hungry. <laughs> we bring you the gift of the Tiger Spirit Rising. You are being empowered with a truth more potent than fear. Your spirit is rapidly expanding beyond what opinion and logic can contain. It needs to be free to run wild with divine grace in the world. Your life, your destiny, your divine fulfillment requires that you have the courage to roar for love, to refuse to be put down, to respect yourself, and to let your untamed loving heart be free. Your spirit creates a field of divine electricity through your body and mind that can liberate others from conformity and social conditioning, allowing them to break away from systems based in control and fear. As your tiger spirit rises, you excite and empower the tiger spirit in others to rise above conditioning as they discover the wild divine spirit being they are in truth. Yes, absolutely, 4444 on the counter, y'all. 
Okay, and then from with that, we go to card number 40. <laughs> from 4444 to card number 40. And that is from Word to World. Just got to find it here. Boop, there it is. All right. We bring you the empowerment of Word to World. What you speak with what you speak of with intention, you shall manifest. You are blessed with the creative power of an open and activated throat chakra. See? See? Communication, throat chakra. Communicate, guys. As you release subconscious fear of speaking your truth, memories of being silenced, and claim your true divine voice, your ability to change your world through your intention is amplified. You have the power of divine creation through sound in you. What you wish to create and experience, speak of with joy. And here we go. I hear that song now in my head, across the room. As I'm reading that, it started playing in my head. See from across the room, like you want to know me, boy. Yes, guys. Communicate. Speak your truth. And it's so interesting because I... I'm, before I really like finish the video, this is something that I've really been coming to terms with, especially with this Knight of Swords energy. It's like, I'll tell a little bit of what I've been going through personally with this. It's like, what do you mean I moved too fast? All I did was come forward and, and, and act on or communicate what I was feeling. Just because you think I moved too fast, that doesn't mean I actually did. What does that say about you when all I did was communicate my truth, tell you what, or, or take action on what I was feeling, tell you what I was feeling. And this is how many of us get silenced. It's like, well, you shouldn't, you should just keep that to yourself. Well, no, actually, I shouldn't just keep that to myself. If you've hurt me, or if something is hurting me, or if something is wrong, if there's some sort of injustice, we need to speak up. If I'm feeling something, or if someone else is feeling something, whether that be for someone else or the situation at hand, why should we not communicate about that? It's time to stop silencing each other. It's time to stop silencing ourselves. And this is a lot of the purging that's happening. Okay, I'm going to get off my soapbox. <laughs> but there it is, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a great day. Um, look out for those two songs that were coming through. I'm going to post them on, my, on the channel. Um, but I love you guys so much. I hope you have a great day and I look forward to connecting with you again tomorrow for our next cup of coffee. Yeah. Take care. Bye.